So good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Welcome to Faith Life Fellowship's online Sunday service. I am Pastor Henry Simon. Welcome, welcome to our uh, weekly broadcast. I'm so happy that you've chosen to join us. Uh, I know many of you join us during the week, not so much uh, live, but we thank you for uh, the overwhelming responses, the comments, and so on and so forth to um, our teachings uh, as we've been as we've been covering advancing the kingdom of God. Okay, and so today marks uh, part six, um, and we are so glad that you've chosen to join us. And so, uh, how many of you know that today is the day that the Lord has made? I, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord this day for this is the day, this day, this day, whatever day you're watching this, this is the day that the Lord has made. I, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his, his blessings upon our time together. Father, we honor you, we worship you, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for this moment. Lord God, feed us, Lord God, the very manna, bread of heaven, the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen, amen. Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm so, um, uh, so thankful to be here today, live here. We're coming live from Dallas, Texas. Um, to all of my veterans, my brothers that are have uh, um, uh, fought in wars, who have served their country, whatever country you've been, you've served in the country. I served in uh, the United States Navy <clears throat> many, many years ago. And so uh, to everyone who has served past and present, those who, um, um, who have fought valiantly for our country, we honor you. We honor you. Um, I know this is not Memorial Day, but this is Veterans Day, so I honor all veterans um, this day, and uh, we're thankful for you, for your service. We thank God for you. Amen, and amen, amen. Well, I, I want to just um, um, also uh, say that we, um, um, we had a terrible accident here uh, in Dallas yesterday. Uh, today is November 13th, by the way, November 12th, uh, um, where two airplane, uh, airplanes crashed, uh, and it uh, was uh, in, in a celebration of the veterans, and um, it was a terrible crash in which I believe six souls were, were lost, and so we lift up those families um, uh, that uh, were represented in those uh, and those plane crashes, uh, or at least those two planes that collided here in Dallas yesterday. What a horrible, horrible situation. And so we pray God's mercy upon those families. And you know what? We, we, we thank God for you and any and um, everything that you and your family has been enduring, going through. Um, we pray that, uh, you know, God would meet the need, that God would heal, that God would supply, that God would deliver that God would provide, amen and amen, in your situation. And so, without further ado, I, I love uh, the Word of God, love the Word of God. Uh, we're going to go to our scripture verse of the week, uh, this week. Um, and uh, I would like to uh, like to read that today. And so, the, the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 8, Ask, ask. Here's the, 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 the Spirit of the living God speaking to us today. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. It may not happen immediately, but God is looking uh, for faithful people. God is looking for endurance. God is teaching us about endurance. Amen. And so what Matthew 7, uh, uh, 
is uh, verses seven through eight is 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 telling us it's not that God is just some casino or slot machine or um, you know a vending machine. Is that uh, in our relationship with Him we wait on Him as we ask, as we pray. Amen. Some things come quickly, some things take a while. It's about seasons, right? And so when it's time, God will open that door for you to receive what it what he has for you. Amen and amen. So Matthew chapter 7, um, I, I want you to meditate on that. Ask, I want you to ask God. Last week we talked about a make your declaration. Amen. And so you can open your mouth and you can... Uh, you can ask God for whatever it is that you want, every, whatever it is that you desire. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And so uh, as we uh, prepare to go forward in our ministry today, uh, again, this is Faith Life Fellowship's online Sunday service. And we're going to uh, begin, uh, our, or at least we're going to cover our sixth installment today. Uh, on our pinwheel, or, uh, we'll see the, the topics that we have covered um, in terms of making a sound and uh, understanding that character matters, my character, Pastor Simon, my character matters. It matters how uh, I live when people are not looking at me, uh, understanding that it is God who sees all, amen and amen, courageous faith and prayer and the word of God and making your de uh, declaration. And today we're going to um, talk about moving forward in purpose, moving forward with purpose or in purpose, okay? And so, uh, believe it or not, we after this, we have about three weeks to go and this series is uh, is history. This series is done, except the, the Holy Spirit tell me to continue on. Um, so today, our backdrop is moving forward with purpose, amen and amen, and today we'll go to uh, our scripture, and so my son will put that scripture up for you, so you'll find my assignment today in 2 Kings, yeah, we're going to take a break from Joshua, but 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, 2 Kings chapter 6, 1 through 7. I like the New King James Version, but I'm going to read today the New Living Translation. One day, the group of prophets. Now, the New King James says, um, at least something, the sons of the prophets. The sons of the prophets. Came to Elisha. And told him, as you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. There's timber there, you understand. There we can build a new place for us to meet. I'm talking to some builders today. All right, he told them, go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. Where did it fall, the men of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick, threw it into the water at that spot. In other words, he broke a branch off of a tree. Okay, and he, he threw that branch or that stick, okay, at the spot where it fell in the water. And the Bible says, then the axe head floated to the surface. Grab it, Elisha said. And the man reached out and grabbed it. 
Good God that you are. I hope, guys, you can grab what I'm going to say to this. I've entitled today's message, for those of you who have been waiting for the green light from God, move forward. Move forward. Go. Move forward. We're going to talk about kingdom expansion. Kingdom expansion through your and my life. This is what we've been talking about over the past four or five weeks, even longer from the uh, first series, uh, the series prior to this, but advancing the kingdom of God. You don't have to wait until 2023. You can make your declaration. In fact, you should have made your declaration last week. So this is just a, a follow-up to what was taught last week. Caleb made his declaration. I'm getting ahead of myself. Good God that you are. Move forward. Move forward forward move you've been waiting god has given you a word god has given me a word i'm believing my wife and i are believing god for some things move forward move forward move forward amen and amen last week i taught a message entitled giant slayers and we looked at the book of joshua and specifically the courage of of caleb and his plea to Joshua to allow him to, to have Hebron or Ebron as an inheritance. Despite the fact that the descendants of Anak, you know, the giants, were already present there and possessing the mountain. Caleb, the man of God, was not deterred. He was a man that was full of faith. He believed God. God for the miraculous. Good God that you are. God made a promise to him 40 years previously when he and Joshua and the other 10 spies went into the promised land. And as he looked around, as he spied the land and he saw many mountains, no doubt, and valleys and so on and so forth. But there was this one, one mountain, one set, it's actually a mountain range, but this one mountain that he wanted, uh, it was called Hebron, it was called Hebron, or Kujath Arba, uh, Arjaba, uh, that belonged to the Anak, that belonged to the giants. And Caleb said, I want that. And he did not forget all those, all the, all the, all those decades of wandering in the wilderness, wandering in the dry places, not seeing any signs of light, so on and so forth. He had not forgotten what God, what he saw, and what God had promised him through the lips of Moses, because he was faithful. He gave a good report. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what others. It doesn't matter what others say. God is concerned about what you think. Peter, who do people say? Or at least he asked the disciples, who do you say I am? Some say this, and some say that. And, some <coughs> and then the Bible says Peter spoke and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied to him, Son of Barjona, Simon Barjona, You've, you've well said, for flesh and blood have not revealed this. But my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. Let me tell you something. Once God shows you, once God gives you the okay, I said that last week. Once God, once God gives you the okay, once God has placed something in your heart, and if you wholly go after it, and you believe and trust God for it, baby, it's yours. It's yours. Caleb said, give me this mountain. I told you this was a continuation from last week. I'm still on high from that one. Give me this mountain. And the Bible says uh, uh, that Joshua blessed him and gave him uh, uh, Hebron. Gave him Hebron. He gave to, to, to Caleb, the, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. And the Bible, interestingly, declares that Hebron, or Hebron, therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kizanite, to this day. In other words, it did not just start or stop 4,000 years ago with Caleb. No. No. 
It's to all of us who will believe and who will live righteously for God. Not perfect. Not perfect. Who will live righteously in Christ Jesus. In other words, we, we must take a, a spiritual bath every day. We must, we must depend and rely upon him. It's in him where we find righteousness, not not perfection. There's but one perfect. But but Joshua gave gave Caleb, Caleb that is, a Hebron, which means, if you remember what I told you, it means association, partnership, agreement. God will come into agreement and make that thing happen. I'm getting ahead of myself. Caleb, holy Follow the Lord our God. He made his declaration. Have you made your declaration? You should have last week. Now, let's get moving, right? Let's, let's move forward into those things that have been placed deep within our hearts. The Bible says, the, 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 the Bible says, uh, uh, and, and my notes, excuse me, are kind of out of out of line here. But the the, the Bible says, or Jesus says in Luke nine and sixty two, uh, Jesus said, "No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God." If, if we're going to move forward, and there are many examples that I'm going to talk about here in 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 a, in a few moments, if we're going to move forward in God, Jesus is saying in Luke nine in verse sixty two that no one who puts his hand to the plow, in other words, you're going to do this, you're going to try an accomplishment, but looking back, looking back at your past, staying in the past, living in the past, wondering about yesterday upset about who's left you, and so on and so forth, Jesus says, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Why? Because God, your God, is a forward thinker. God wants his people to be a forward, forward thinker. Remember Isaiah 43 and 18, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Psalm 32 and 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans of uh, what? Good. Not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. You see how your God is a, he's a forward thinking God. <clears throat> People who remind us of, a, uh, of our past, uh, those of us who who choose to live in our past, this is nothing other than a trick of the enemy. This is an Amalekite, a, a type of the Amalekite spirit. I don't have time to go there today, but understand, understand. Paul says, I, I, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upper call in God, Christ Jesus. I, I, I press, I, 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 I press. God wants us thinking forward. Last year was last year. It's not easy. My wife knows I went through a season in my life. Uh, I, I just could not get out. I could not get out of this, this loop of, uh, of depression and my past and so on and so forth. And I would ask my wife, how, 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 how can I do it? I, I don't understand. And finally, I learned and understood that I had to give it to God. In other words, I had to release it. I had to let it go. And as time went on, and the closer I came to God, it became a non-issue. Yeah, I still remember, still there, but it doesn't sting or hurt the way that it used to. Some of you need to let that go. You have to move forward in God. Uh, you have to move forward. You have to move forward. So if we, if you're going to do, if you're going to advance the kingdom, if you're going to see some of the things that, uh, or you de desire to see some of the things that God has for you, you have to move forward in him. You can't find God in your past. Yes, God is in those dimensions, past, present, and future. But 
and okay, let me let me let me say that you can't find God. Yes, you can find God. You pass because when you look back, you see the goodness, the grace, the mercy of God. Yeah, amen. But that was yesterday. I, I every morning His mercies are new to us. Every morning, God wants us looking forward to every day, every day serving Him. You understand? He doesn't want us to live in the past and and it's with that i want to say that the bible is filled with examples of god leading his people forward in the beginning when cain murdered abel god did not allow cain to wallow in his sin but instead placed a mark on him and sent him on his way thank god for his mercy God found Noah to be the only righteous man on earth. In, in, at that time, in the book of Genesis, uh, uh, chapter 6, you'll see uh, the earth was filled with violence and perversion. And God said, I, my, my, my spirit shall not strive with man anymore. It's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. So he instructed Noah to do what? To build a boat, to build an ark, because he was about to send rain upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, mind you, this is something that had never happened. I don't know who you are, but God is about to do something in your life that you have no frame of reference for. It has never happened. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. God was about to send rain. He was going to flood the earth and every living thing would perish. Everything would die. Noah did all that God commanded him. And by doing so, Noah saved his family and he condemned the world. David moved forward towards Goliath. When you look at the story, if you read the story of David and Goliath, David advanced against Goliath while Saul and his people cowered and retreated backwards in fear. Gideon led God's army forward in spite of the numbers. The Lord Jesus led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He didn't remain in hell. He didn't remain in paradise. He got up. He, 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 he was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus going forward took people with him. You understand, those souls with him. And then at that, that's a good God that he, that he is. He gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, you understand. Why? To help to help us through our journey called life. Moses in the book of Exodus led the children of Israel forward out of bondage into freedom. And as they were fleeing their slave masters, the Egyptians, they came to a point in their mass exodus whereby they seemed to be trapped and out of options for their impending escape. Mountains to their left, mountains to their right, and the Red Sea in front of them. Behind them are their Egyptian taskmasters. What's more, Pharaoh and his, hair, uh, and his horsemen and chariots had caught up with the people of Israel as they camped beside the sea. They thought they were done. And the people of Israel looked up and panicked. And when they saw the Egyptians, uh, when they saw the Egyptians uh, overtaking them, and they began to cry out and to complain out uh, to the Lord and to Moses, why did you bring us up out of Egypt? Why did you bring, you brought us here to die in the wilderness? weren't there enough graves in, in, for us in Egypt? Uh, why have you done this? You, you know, you, you you've done you've done this to us. We could have just stayed in Egypt. We told you to leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. The devil is a liar. It's better to, to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. And what you know, 40 years later, they would all die in the wilderness, their corpse, by the words of their very mouth, because of their complaining. Nonetheless, and Moses, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. I'm telling you, Whatever it is that you're believing God for, don't fear. 
stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. That today is not back then. That today is now. Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. Moses made the declaration to quell their fears, but the hoofs of the horses and the wheels of the Egyptian chariots and the memories of the whips and the harshness of their taskmasters were far louder than Moses' clarion call. The things that you're going through, the things that you've been through, the things that you think you know are far louder than what this preacher is preaching to you. The Bible says, and then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. I want to tell you. Here's my exhortation to you. Whatever it is, I know there's some things that I'm believing God for and, and so on and so forth. And God has released me and God has, has, has delivered me and so on and so forth. But I know it's going to take time, but I need to start working towards it. Go forward. Move Move forward. You see, because the character of your God is that he's, he's, uh, he's always a forward thinker. So for us to want God to dwell in the past, think about the lame man. There's no one to put me in the water. There's no one to put me in the pool. And when someone does this and when someone does that, they hurry up and get in front of me. Jesus says, will you be made whole? But, you know, and he had all these excuses about his present and his past. Jesus, in his, <clears throat> in his, his, his willingness to heal, in his willingness to make him whole, in his willingness to deliver him from his affliction, told him to, told the lame man to pick up your mat. Walk and go. I, 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 I'm telling you, you cannot live in the past and walk with God because he's always walking forward. Remember when they were looking at Jesus up, ascend into heaven, and, and the angels appeared to them and said, What, 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 what y'all doing? What y'all looking at? He's risen. He's gone. You need to go into uh, into uh, into Jerusalem. You need, you need to go and begin doing what he's told you to do. But they're standing there looking. Some of us, we've gotten a word from God, and we're standing there still waiting for a, for a word from God when God has already spoken to you. Get moving. Get moving. Stagnation doesn't do any of us. Any good, but put on weight, right? Get get moving. And Lord, I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Get moving. Amen. Amen. Get moving. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. And it's not disturbed by your and my mistakes of yesterday. Nor my mistakes of today. Amen. God is a God of yesterday, today, and forever. God has your past covered. In the blood of Jesus. God has your present covered. In the blood of Jesus. God has your future covered. In the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against us. Shall prosper. If God is for us. Then who can be against us. God wants us to move forward. Understand. God is always. I, I, I can't. Uh, say it enough that God wants us to move forward because he does not, although he exists in past, present, future, he does not live in the past. And because your God and my Lord is not bound by clocks and watches, God is not limited by time. Uh, you know, he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. He's omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's omnipotent. Moses, if you recall, he said, show me your glory. 
in Exodus 33. In other words, he wanted to see the face of God. Lord, we cool. We cool. I've been walking with you. I'm, you know, I've been sacrificing, fasting, I, praying. Lord, let, can I can I see your face? God told him, I, I I I I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim uh, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That's interesting that God put that in there. In other words, time, uh, uh, things that will happen. I, it's, it's my choice. It's my choice. I don't live by your time, your, your procedures and rules and policies and laws. It's me. And, and, and God told me, he says, you can't, you can't see my face and live. But there is a place that's, that's next to me, and I'll, I'll allow you to stand on the rock, and I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock, and, and as my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock for, and cover you with my hand as I pass by. He did not sh uh, show Moses the future, but he did show him the past, and that's how Moses was able to write Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. This is how Moses wasn't even born. Remember, Moses came about Exodus chapter 3. Moses wasn't there in the beginning, but he wrote it. This is what the revelation of God will do. God will show you things. I will show you. He says, then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. You'll see where I've been, but you shall not see my face. God wants us to always seek his face, although in the flesh we can't actually see it. I want you to seek me for revelation. I want you to seek me for knowledge and wisdom. I want you to seek me. This is why we speak. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, this is why we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age, past, present, or future, none of them knew. For if, had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord Jesus. There are some things that are reserved for he and he alone, and he shows his covenant to whom he desires. Check Psalm 25 on that. But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's good. Because it shows a total dependence and reliance on him. Move forward. How do we move forward in the promises of God? How do we get started? How do we know that we, 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 know that we can do it? Well, Jesus says in Matthew 16 and 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will give you the keys. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I, and I believe my text today. Yeah, that was just my introduction. I believe my, te my text today gives us some nuggets. It gives us some clues as to what those keys are. The keys that Jesus is speaking about in Matthew 16 can be seen in 2 Kings chapter 6 through the prophet Elisha. Oh, I'm coming. The Bible says that the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too, too small for us. The, the, there was a clear and distinct need. Can I tell you that your God meets people's needs? He, he meets the needs of his people. He oftentimes exceeds the, 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 the request. He, he, he exceeds the need. But your God is a need meter. And so they, they have a need and they come to Elijah and the place where we dwell with you is too small. We, we, need, 
we we need we we need a bigger space. I don't know who got that, but God is about to enlarge your territory. God is about to enlarge you. You're coming out of that job. It's too small. You're coming out of that house. It's too small. You're, you're coming out of that bank. You, you need a bigger bank, if you will. You, you, you need to get your, your faith aligned to the word of God. Partners, you, you need to partner with me and my faith and that we, we can come together with the anointing and see God do the miraculous in your life. And so I, I, I have seven keys that I want to share with you today and because moving forward requires, and my son is putting that on the screen for you, uh, my, uh, uh, my, my, my first point for you today is that, that as we understand through the, the, the sons of the prophets is that th there was a need. So th there must be a clearly defined purpose. There must be a clearly defined purpose. Why are you asking God for what you're asking him for? Why are you declaring what you're declaring? The sons of the prophets, they had, they, they had a, 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 clear, a clearly defined purpose. Where, where we are now, it, it's too small. It was justifiable. It was not to just build just to build just to have just to have but but they had filled what they had god oftentimes will not will not give us more until we filled what we have already been given till we fulfilled that show that we are good servants with what we have amen and amen god he does not waste anything so they so they, they they said please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam a log some timber from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell which gives me number 2 We must in moving forward it requires us to I uh, to, I put possessing a vision but we we must possess or have a vision you, we, we, we need to have a vision. So you, you have to have a purpose. Okay. You, you have to have a plan or a vision. And so Elisha agrees with them. It's awesome to have God agree with you. So he answered, go. Then one said, please consent uh, to go with your servants, and he 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 he, he said, uh, 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 "I I definitely or I will I I will I will go, I I will go." So so number three says you have to understand the mission. You have to understand. You have to understand your mission you have to understand your mission in other words if god is going to send you and go with you and so on and so forth you have to understand what it is that you are wanting to accomplish in other words the purpose the purpose uh let me go ahead and have the camera son so i can teach the teach on these three just just briefly but but the purpose is the why and it's not on the screen but listen carefully. The purpose, the purpose is the why or the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So if I'm asking, Pastor Simon is asking the Lord for the nations. Okay, so what's my purpose in asking the Lord to send me to the nations? What's my purpose? Well, obviously, my purpose is to seek and to save that which is lost, to to spread the good news. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The vision, the vision, which was point two, my son showed you. The vision is the how. So the purpose is the why. The vision is the the how, or the ability to think about. Or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. 
My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Many of us have, uh, uh, you know, we say we have vision, we say we have, we say we have purpose and this and that, uh, but we don't know how we're going to get there. Uh, oftentimes it just stays on the table, much like blueprints. You, in the season that you and I are coming in, we're going to need to be, uh, uh, be very, very prayerful and diligent about trying to uh, plan these things out. How am I going to do that, Pastor? It is God who gives wisdom for witty inventions. It is God by His Spirit who leads and guides us into all truth. It is so. 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 I, I, without getting ahead of myself, of course, I, I need to depend on on Him because I need the resources. Nehemiah. Nehemiah told the king, "I want to go back. I want to go back to Jerusalem, and I want to rebuild." And and. I, I, the, the Bible says he, he asked him for, for, for resources. He asked him for timber. Lord, I need this, I need this, I need this. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm telling you, you need to be specific. Begin to write the vision. Okay, Lord, I need this, 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 this. Who's ready for 2023? I'm not talking about a calendar year. I'm talking about a moment, a time. That time is now. Vision. It's it's the how. It's the how. It's it's the how. And I have so much on my mind, so much I want to do, and it's like, Lord, how? How? Lord, speak to your people. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Lord, show me. Show me, Father. Lift your hands to the Lord. Ask the Lord to show you. Ask. Ask, seek, knock, ask, ask, seek, knock. I'm teaching you. Ask, seek, knock. This this is something that you, you know. Once you you've come to a a a a. I I don't know how I I want to say, it, but once you've come to a a a a, a part. Uh, our moment in your relationship with God it is now is more than just thank you Lord for my wife thank you Lord for my, doing my job listen and now you're talking to him about business because we're trying to advance the kingdom of God and I want to be used of him now Lord I need wisdom as to how to do this I need people in my life I need I need hookups Lord I need you to Connect me with the right people. And Lord, uh, uh, those who are not the right people, show me, Holy Spirit. Amen? And amen. So so, so, and so next is, is, is the mission that my son just showed you, I think with point three. Uh, uh, the, the mission is, is the what? The wise purpose, uh, the vision is, 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 is how we're going to do this. The mission is, is the what? It's the specific task with which a person or group is charged with. Here's my here's my mission. Here's he, here's what I do. And, and though there's similarities between the three, there are distinct differences between each. Moses was a visionary. Moses. Moses was a visionary. Joshua was a visionary and a military strategist. David was a a a, a, a visionary. Vision is important. Vision is is all three of them, but understanding vision and purpose is 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 it's it's vital to us advancing the kingdom of God. It's vital. So so I I want to get back to the the, the scriptures, uh, which lends to uh, number four, son. Uh, lends to number four is 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 learning. As, as we're doing, uh, trying to understand our mission and how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that and, and so on and so forth, uh, I, I need to invite the Holy Spirit into my situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teaching going on today. Yeah. Make it an invitation. Make it... Make it, 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 it your your priority 
daily when you wake up, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're going through, I don't care if you're disciplining your children. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, I need you this day. Come with me to work. Be in my office. Be in my room. Be in my classroom. Lord, be in my bedroom. Be in my mind. Be, Lord, I need you to be in my house. Be with this situation, Lord, as I try to navigate this, Lord God, as I as I try to buy this house, as I try to buy this strip mall, as I try, you understand. Invite him. Invite the Holy Spirit into your space. Number five, expect the unexpected. And this a lot of times will come up in my in my uh, in in some of my points when I preach. It's because when, when you look at the when you look at this story, when you look at this story, the Bible says <coughs> they asked him, "Can you come with us?" They invited him, as point uh, four says. They invited Elisha. They invited the man of God. In this context, I'm talking to you about the Holy Spirit, though. And the Bible says that as they were cutting down trees, the uh, uh, the iron axe head, one of the, 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 the guys, one of the prophets, when they were cutting the tree down, that the axe head came off the stick. And it fell, what you know, into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, Master, for it was born. Now, I, I want to stop and just for a moment and say, you, you, you and I have to expect the unexpected. I told you, every dimension has a giant. Last week, I, I taught every dimension, every great and effectual door, Paul calls it, Every great and effectual door has a giant, has a giant waiting. In other words, there's something there that's probably going to happen to discourage you and I. There's something there that's there to make us afraid. There's something there uh, that's going to cause us to not want to go towards that purpose. Good God that you are. Good God that you are. So what it is, is that we have to expect Fact, things to happen, mishaps. This is spiritual warfare. <coughs> we have to, <coughs> excuse me. We have to expect these sorts of things to happen. There's a price for advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's called persecution. There's a price. In this context, the axe head fell into the water. The axe head fell into the water. Expect the, un, uh, the, the unexpected. My next point as I, as I continue. He cries out to the man of God. See, that's why it's important for us to Welcome the Holy Spirit into our marriages. Welcome the Holy Spirit into our families as we discipline and, 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 and raise our children to be God-fearing men, uh, young men and young women, young girls and, and boys. This, this, we, we invite him in. It's crucial. It's finally critical that we have the Holy Spirit because you see, things happen. Things come up. Teenage pregnancy. Uh, 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 maybe someone's got put in jail, into juvie. Uh, whatever the case may be, maybe someone's sick. Something comes up. And so when you read my number six, my point is a, a, a reliance. A reliance on divine guidance, intervention, and protection. A, a, there has to be a dependence, a reliance upon God, upon the Holy Spirit. I, Lord, I need you to guide me. Lord, I need you to intervene in this situation. Lord, I need your, I need your divine protection. Now, now, going back to the story, 
he cries out to Elisha, it was borrowed. No doubt, the scripture doesn't tell us, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Let's, let's go on a spiritual imagination, uh, imaginative uh, 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 thought process here. Let, let, let's, 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 let's just think. That axe head was borrowed. And he did it for a good thing because he wanted to help to cut trees down so that they could build a house. But he borrowed it from someone. And back in those days, the head of an axe was very expensive. He couldn't afford to replace it. There are some things that, whether it's debt, that we've gotten ourselves into and it was because I needed a college degree and I've lost my job and Lord I can't pay my my creditors I've I, I got to file for bankruptcy I have to do this it was you understand it was borrowed and the bank is coming against me it, it, it was it was borrowed I, I, it, 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 what happened, the pregnancy, you understand, I, I can't afford this right now. I, I had an abortion, I knew it wasn't the right thing to do, but I had an abortion, and Lord, I'm struggling with this. It, it fell into the water, and, and apparently it was, you know, where it, it was, it was at a depth to where it's, Probably he couldn't swim. I don't know if he didn't know how to swim or whatever. <clears throat> but he cried out to God. Can I tell you that situation? God wants you to cry out to him. Because he says, I'll meet your need. I'm a great deliverer. Torrin Wells has a song. Do, do what you're famous for. Do, 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 Lord, what you're, what you're famous for. See, we've lost our, uh, we, we've lost our desire. We've lost our desire to believe him for the miraculous. And you know what? That is just what he did. Number seven. You know, I probably could have had eight points on this because, you know, when you rely on God's divine intervention, protection, and guidance, that's where miracles are. Verse 6 says, so the man of God said, where did it fall? Where did, where did things go wrong? Why did you stop believing? Why did you stop living for me? And the Bible says the man of God showed him, the prophet, the young prophet showed him the place. And the Bible says, so he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron float. The, the, the stick is a symbol of the cross. And the stick being thrown into the water, where, at the Jordan, where, okay, where the axe head was, no doubt it went all the way to the bottom. But God performed a miracle for this man through Elijah's hands or through Elijah's words. Elisha throws a stick. He says, you show me where it was, where it fell. He throws a stick at it uh, in, the, in the water where it hit. <clears throat> and the miraculous, you understand, something that heavy, 15, 20, 35 pounds, however, however big this axe head was, the Bible's not clear. Miraculously, it comes to the surface and it floats. 
All right, you got to see this. Number seven says, moving in faith towards the purpose. <laughs> moving forward requires us moving in faith towards the purpose. <clears throat> Verse seven says, therefore, the man of God said, pick it up for yourself. God is not going to do what you can do for yourself. You need to move in faith. And you need to pick up that book up you need to register for those classes you need to write the book you need to uh, go back to school you need to begin the building you begin you you understand pick it up move in faith and the bible says so he reached out his hand and took it i don't know who i'm talking to today and i'm certainly talking to myself you're waiting for God to just do it. It's not going to happen that way. You're going to have to go find the job. I'm not going to just, I, I, I'll go with you, and I'm with you in the situation. Okay? I, 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 I'll, I'll, do some, I'll do some miraculous things for you, but there are some things that God requires. I'm not going to do it all for you. You have to begin the process as well. And God, much like Caleb and Hebron, you understand, God partnering with us, God coming alongside us, God says, through the man of God, you pick it up yourself. Pick it up. Pick it up yourself. Pick it up yourself. God wants us to move forward, begin the work. <clears throat> begin the move. You believe God is moving you to another country. You believe God is moving you to another state. Begin the move. Begin the process. Pick it up for yourself. So the Bible says, so he reached out his hand and took it. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Move forward. Move forward. Good God that you are. Move forward. Can I pray with you? Lord, strengthen. Strengthen. Somebody's got this, Lord. Somebody's about to do the miraculous. Somebody is about to see the miraculous done in their life because they believe you. They believe the word of God. Now, Father, since they have activated their faith. Perform it, Father God. Come into partnership with us that we might see the miraculous hand of God. Good God that you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Boy, this was good. This was good. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to tell you, you can come in partnership. He'll come in partnership with you. But you it, it takes you first. You, you, you have to allow him in to come into your heart. Pray with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Change me, Father God. Have mercy on me. I repent of my sins. I turn away from wickedness. And I turn to you. Now, Lord, change my life. Change my life to your glory. And I thank you. I thank you for eternal life. I thank you for saving me. Lord, I will live for you now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This was good, Father. We praise you. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord God, this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I enjoy what I taught today. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. Can you taste and see it? That the Lord is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, next week. Come back, join us, join us for next week. Um, 
as we prepare. That'll be Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving here, at least here in the United States, for those of you who don't celebrate Thanksgiving in your country. Um, but next week, um, um, not, yeah, the, yeah, next week, um, will be part seven, um, and so, um, we, um, uh, we pray God's very best, uh, upon you. We pray that you would continue on learning and growing with us. Amen and amen. So st stay tuned. Join us next week for Advancing the Kingdom of God series part seven. Um, I believe uh, we'll be talking about the fear of the Lord, I believe. I believe it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, kind to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen and amen. We love you here at Faith Life Fellowship. My wife and I, we send our very best greetings to you. We pray that this day, this week, um, has been a awesome week for you. We uh, pray God's strength in your life. Amen and amen. May you sense and know that God loves you. And we do too. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.